There is more than one kind of enterprise Java bean. There are three fundamental kinds of beans, and then within these there are some differences based on their behavior. By far, the most common kind of bean is the session bean. This is the kind of bean that a program calls on to do basic things having to do with business logic. It contains the logic and information that is a fundamental part of operations. It may do interest calculations or determine the number of items in inventory. In a multi-tiered application, this is the sort of thing that's done by the middle tier. The database filled with raw information is on one side and the user interface is on the other. A stateless bean is one that doesn't remember anything from one method call to the next. If it has any configuration settings at all, these settings remain the same throughout its life and it responds to every method call as if it were the first one it's ever gotten. They're very efficient because the server, the container of the beans, doesn't have to keep track of anything from one call to another. The other kind of session bean is stateful. A stateful bean holds on to some client information, the state of that client, from one method call to the next. The client will make one or more method calls that set the state values, and those values will be used in subsequent method calls. You can create a complete system using session beans. If it is stateless, a session bean is for general utility. If it's stateful, a session bean is tied to one client because it holds the state of that one client. If you are implementing a system that requires access to data, you might want to implement an entity bean. Each entity bean is an object that contains the definition of a single entity. That is, an entity bean will contain all the information about one specific item. That item could be a specific person from the personnel files, a specific item in the warehouse, or whatever. An entity bean contains exactly one thing. It's truly an object where a session bean is more of a location for utility functions. The item represented by an entity bean is usually information held in a database of some sort. It is persistent, that is, you can read from it and store information into it, and the reading and writing of the database is carried on for you in the background by the bean. It provides your program with direct access to the data. For example, if your program is working with student records, there will be one entity bean for each student. As long as your program is dealing with the information for one student, you can call the methods of that one bean to read and update the information for that student. If you need to access the records of another student, you'll need to communicate with another bean. The third type of bean is a message bean. It's similar in operation to background processes that don't do anything but sleep until a message or signal arrives, and then they come awake and perform a task. The bean is written to perform some specific task, and then sleeps until it's told to do so. Now, beans can talk to beans. In a large application, it's normal to have beans that call the methods of other beans to get things done. A method of a session bean may call the methods of another session bean, and may call the methods of an entity bean or send a signal to a message bean. Starting with the next lesson, we're going to write some beans and put them in a server and make them work.